Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, NWA Review Series for the uh, NWA Power Review Series for the um, 17th of May 2022. NWA Power opens, opens with Nick Aldis and uh, Matt Cardona taking out the to the announce table with Joe Galley and basically there's talk of... Uh, Cardona, who is your NWA champion, said that Aldis didn't deserve a title shot despite being announced as the always ready pay per view challenger. Aldis then talked about how he is uh, resting, uh, resisting attacking Cardona at the moment because he doesn't. He wanted the gold, especially after he laid his hands on Mickey James. Cardona then uh, wanted a death match with Aldis. Uh, and Aldis wants the steel cage match. Billy Corn and the NWA official stated they would deliberate and announce the stipulations for the title match soon. Um, decent recap of the angle and the always ready pay per view should be good by the NWA. Austin Idol and Tyrus come out and they join the commentary desk. Pope and Trevor Murdoch come to the podium as well with Kyle Davis. Pope mentions that Murdoch is hurt along the way, but he would never. Uh, heal if he kept being bitter and the Pope and uh, at the Pope and uh, the people stand with him. Pope reminds that Murdoch uh, he's carried the legacy of Harley Race and Race would slap him and bring the fire back to him at some level. Pope then told him to fire up and go reclaim the NWA championship as the fans chanted Murdoch and he leaves without saying anything. This is a uh, decent enough promo, NWA Women's Tag Team Champions. Why do we need Women's Tag Team Champions in every league these days? Uh, the Hex, uh, Allison K. and Marty Bell defeats uh, Maddie and Kenzie Page to retain the titles. Um, this is about Page refusing to cheat, cheat and Maddie trying to convince her to do so. Um, the wrestling goes, I guess, is fine. Page and K start out with some decent enough wrestling. Maddie blind tags in and yells at Page to be more aggressive. Maddie then charges Kay, but Kay then dumps her into her own corner before tagging out to Bell, and then Bell hits a stroke for near fall. Um, Maddie then blinded Bell with hairspray, and the referee uh, isn't looking when this happens. Paige tells her to watch her. She slams Bell's face into the mat. Paige then tags in, but l looked unsure about the Cheating, Maddie then pulls the chair out from under the ring and tells Paige to hit Kay with it while struggling with the decision. Kay rolls up O'Connor to get the pin. And then we go to Velvet Sky with Taryn Tyrell backstage. She asks Tyrell about the apparent announcement she had to make. Tyrell then points out that Sky is not on commentary and she moved back down uh, into the backstage interview situation. Colby Carino defeats AJ Kazana. Nice little squash for Carino. Uh, Carino is cocky throughout. Carino immediately hits uh, Cardoza with a very basic set of moves. Nothing necessarily worth taking a look at there, but we will be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail after I got my phone. We'll be right back. And again, Carino being in a position of higher value, especially having overcome addiction-related issues, is really awesome if you think about the challenges they're in. So, and hopefully that's valuable and, and a good thing and worth taking a look at from a deeper level there. So, uh, we can, we then move forward into uh, the idea there of something, um, and, and with Karina picking up a, a victory here, I'm not necessarily sure that he needed to be in a squash match, but a lot of shows fill, fill time with squashes just to get guys on some level of television program, and ultimately that's what this seems like they've done here. Uh, then we move to uh, the next in series of things. The Briscoes are at the podium with Kyle Davis. Mark Briscoe said that uh, La Rebellion... Is lucky that they barely beat them and they aren't done coming after them. They promised the next time they faced off the Briscoes would be the NWA Tag Team Champions, which I assume for the NWA would be a good move. I'm not sure that that would be a good move for the Briscoes, but hey, whatever have you. Anyway, so we move to Jack Stane in the end, Paro and Odinson. 
defeating the ill-begotten Rush Freeman and Jeremiah Puckett and Alex Taylor with Danny Gales and Gold Rush Black Jeeves, uh, Shea Rocket and um, Jordan Clearwater in a Team Wars match. Uh, still not clear whether DQs are allowed in these or not. They added the rule that makes things a bit more logical with members of all three teams needing to be in the ring at all times. Jeeves hits a missile drop kick on Dane, but then Puckett and Jeeves struggle with the much bigger Dane. Dane takes his head off one of his opponents with a lariat for the first elimination. I'm not a fan of these elimination matches by any stretch. Rocket then comes in, works over Puckett on Dane, but Dane rolls out to the floor. Puckett and Dane brawled on the floor, but Puckett comes back with Rocket, nailing Puckett with a spine buster. For a near fall, Rocket then hit a drop kick and sends Dane crashing over the apron to the floor and announced Dane was eliminated, but he never went over the top rope officially. Um, then we see uh, Odinson come in, taking out Puckett with a torture rack. Rocket then drops him over the top rope to eliminate him. Uh, Taylor jumps on Pyro's back and immediately gets jumped to the mat. Rocket and Pyro exchange strikes. And powerful attacks. Pyro then hits a superplex on Rocket. Taylor hits a frog splash for a three count. Uh, Clearwater and Freeman comes in with Clearwater hitting the golden ticket. Stunner on Pyro for the near fall. Pyro then choke slammed him and pinned him in what's meant to be. Gold Rush is eliminated. Father James Mitchell then comes. Uh, with Velvet Sky, he explains that Gags the Gimp is under a bridge. Mitchell explains Gags the Gimp is like Dr. Frankenstein's Igor, explaining Gags is a useful idiot who uh, cleared his moat. We now know the Sinister Minister uh, has a moat, and ultimately, Mitchell claims that Gags only obeyed him. Angelina Love shows up and shows support. Velvet Sky appeared to take over the interview at the end. Two Skies Annoyance. And then we move to uh, main event. Mickey James defeats Narcolia Marco Natalia Markova with Taryn Terrell. Um, this is her, I guess, Terrell's surprise. They exchange holds early. James hits a Thez Press neckbreaker for near fall. Markova then hits a cutter on James for two count. James uh, chopped Markova in the corner, but Markova hits a clothesline for a two count. Markova then hits a sleeper on James. James then uh, eventually breaks it up by jumping backwards and crashing to the canvas. Uh, James hits several clotheslines and then goes to the top rope. James hits a thirst press off the top rope for near fall. James then kicks uh, at Tyrell, who sticks, sticks her tongue out at James. Uh, James then hits some kicks before catching Markova to fall into the split. Ty uh, Tyra says on commentary, uh, I would have tapped out to that. Uh, and then, uh, James uses the Tornado DDT to get the win, and off we go. Not a bad NWA show, and better than most of the national products, but still, uh, has some people that don't belong on the product as a whole. We'll be back with more right after this.